Hey everyone, welcome to your 22nd JavaScript basic video in which we're going to discuss about for loop in JavaScript and see how it basically works and uh, how you have to use it, right? So looping is basically a concept of repeating a statement some number of times without actually writing them all by yourself, right? It's essentially useful because sometimes you have to loop a variable number of times, which then um, basically you want to use um, loops there because you cannot write a statement variable number of times, right? If it's a fixed loop, sure, you can replace that and write it all by yourself. But how would you write if the loop gets its input, say, from the user, right? So we're going to discuss for loop in this one, right? And the syntax for that is for, then curly bracket, not really curly brackets, parenthesis, your three statements would go in here, right? Here goes stuff, declaration stuff, right? Whatever you want to declare, variables which are used in this variable. Now remember, let is a block scoped variable and for loop create a block. So if you use let here, you won't be able to use that variable here. But if you use var here, you would be able to use it here because var is function scoped. And I'm going to get to that, what I mean by that pretty soon. So I'm going to say let i equal to zero, right? My initialization is done. Now here's my um, condition till when, uh, up to which point this loop should run. So I want this loop to run until i is less than 10 or i is not equal to 10, whatever you like, right? But the preference is kind of like using less than and greater than, right? Now here, what do I want to do at each iteration? Well, I want to increment i, right? I want to plus it uh, by one. But again, instead of this, we can use i plus plus to make make things simple. And I'm just going to console log i here and see what happens. So you see what happened here is basically I'm going to elaborate it right now. When JavaScript came to this line, it said, "Okay." Let's initialize this let i equal to zero, done. I'm gonna check if the statement is true or not. Well, zero is less than 10. Okay, fair enough. We're gonna run this. We're not gonna check this at the first iteration. We're not gonna execute this at the first iteration, right? So what happened was step zero was i equal to, i equal to zero. Step one was setting, was checking if i is less than 10 which is true step two was executing the block right this block all right then step three was i plus plus step four then again was checking the condition if i is less than 10 well is it less than 10 no because i plus plus gives you finally gives you one right and it does not really matter if you use i plus plus or plus plus i here because you know it takes in account of the final value because here's essentially where you're checking i right not here so it does not really matter right i'm going to just keep it i plus plus true step five again um you know executing and uh, this would continue I'm going to get to a step x where i plus plus is going to give me 9 x plus 1 um, is again checking 9 is less than 10 which is true x plus 2 is executing x plus 3 is basically i plus plus which gives me finally 10 and then x plus 4 is checking now it is false so i get get out of the loop so that's why when i plus plus is 10 it does not really execute and show here all right so now the reason i explained you all this because i wanted to use var here now what happens since i told you var is function scoped that means it still exists outside this loop so i'm going to console log i here and see um, let me just console log ta, 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 so that we can we, are, we can see a difference. It's safe. 
you see what happens is that it starts from zero one two three four five six seven eight nine then it exits the loop and then we still see that i is 10. so this is a very common practice actually used by developers whenever they want to get information on how many times the loop ran right because any statement here which breaks the loop would break it would not allow this thing to happen anymore and therefore you're going to get the exact count that yeah this loop ran 10 times or you know pretty much this loop ran like 12 times right from 0 to 11 so you're going to get that count always right so this is basically about uh, for loop how it works with let and war as well and this is basically the working so that's all for this video and i'll see you then in the next one